of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, most welcome to our liturgy on the fourth Sunday of Lent, the rose-colored vestment and the antipendia point us to the Sunday's name, Letare which is Latin for rejoice. We rejoice in God's great love for us, which is revealed to us in all scripture readings today. Let's prepare ourselves to receive divine love by seeking God's mercy for the times when we have closed our hearts to this love. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, Christ Jesus, you call us out of darkness into light. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, by God's grace revealed in you, we have been saved. Lord Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the box. Oh, excuse me. Let us pray. <clears throat> who through your word reconciles the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations of Easter. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. 
In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their forebearers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, and set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lays waste it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my heart tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. <laughs> Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. <laughs> By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion on the aspens of such land we hung up our harps let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you for there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers searched us to be joyous, sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced, if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land 
If I forget you, Jerusalem, me my right change be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I please not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silence if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love he has for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one can boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepar prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, 
but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Each time I visit the campus of Boys Town in Omaha, I am impressed. There is no such thing as a bad boy. There is only bad environments, bad training, bad example, bad language. This was, as we well know, the conviction of the servant of God, Father Edward Flanagan, the founder of Boys Town. He lived according to this conviction. Thousands of boys, homeless or delinquent or both, found a father in him, someone who cares, someone who gives them love, education, and good training and example. Father Flanagan's work with troubled and abandoned youths began in 1917 in a rented house in Omaha with five boys who needed a home. Now, Boys Town helps more than 1.6 million people each year through its main campus, its National Research Hospital in Omaha, its national hotline, and at various locations around the country. It made no difference to Father Flanagan whether a boy was Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, or had no religion at all. He taught all of them how to pray, but gave each one the freedom then to pray in his own way. The color of a person's skin didn't matter to Father Flanagan either. One African-American commentator wrote after his death in 1948, America was founded upon the philosophy that everyone deserves his chance to contribute his talents to make this country great. But America has yet to learn by the example of this humble disciple of Christ, Father Flanagan, that the phrase all people truly includes the white, the brown, and the black. Father Flanagan made visible in an eminent way, as did Jesus himself, the love of God for every human being. God's love and mercy shine through all the scripture texts of this Sunday. The situation of the Israelites in the Babylonian exile seemed hopeless. They couldn't be joyous, as our responsorial psalm says. However, God took the initiative and inspired the Persian king Cyrus to give them their freedom. They were able to return to their land, and Cyrus even supported the rebuilding of their temple in Jerusalem. John's Gospel proclaims the good news of God's love, who even gave up his only begotten Son in order for us to be saved. By grace and by God who is rich in mercy, we have been saved through faith. 
the letter to the Ephesians tells us. We have a share in Christ's resurrection and even now in his heavenly glory. That's what the Sunday Letare tells us with this joyful quality. On today's Sunday, we have moved into the second part of Lent. During the first weeks of Lent, the readings at Mass called us to penance and conversion, to forgiveness and love of enemies, to prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. The emphasis was on our doing. Now, starting today, the readings of the lectionary are about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the healer and life giver, the one who gives life through his confrontation with death. The emphasis is on the work of God, who guides his people, who is rich in mercy, and who sent his Son into the world not to condemn it, but that it might be saved through him. The focus is on our salvation and redemption. God loves each one of us as if you and you and I were the only person in the universe. In Jesus Christ, this love has reached into the deepest depths of earthly illness and darkness and desolation. My brothers and sisters, we too, like Nicodemus, whom we meet in today's gospel, are called upon to actively convert to Jesus, to gradually conform the ways of our lives to his. And even more fundamentally, we are called to look to Jesus <coughs> and to receive from him God's mercy and life life to the full. An expression of our active conversion, of our coming towards the light this Lent, could be, if we haven't made it yet, a good confession. The examination of our conscience helps us to become aware of those areas in our lives that need improvement and a new beginning. The celebration of the sacrament itself assures us of God's forgiveness and of God's continued and never-ending love for us. And we can ask ourselves, what would be a way for us to show something of God's love and mercy that we've received to others? Is it time for us to reach out to a person with whom we are not reconciled? Is there something special we can do inspired by Father Flanagan's ideals for our children or grandchildren in order to show them our love and care? A spiritual exercise that leads us well into Lent's second part could be to sit in front of a crucifix today or this week in our room, in our home, or in, a, in church, and to look at it with great trust and with hope. What the Apostle Paul says is true. Because of his great love for us, God brought us to life with Christ when we were dead in sin. By his grace, we have been saved.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, so him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to charge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we commit ourselves to continual conversion to Jesus, the light of the world, let us offer our petitions to our Father in heaven. For the Church, that we may live the truth, doing all our works in God and welcoming the light into our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that God may continue to inspire them to build up their nations into communities where God is reverenced in all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That God may continue to show the richness of his mercy by calling into new life those who are broken through sin and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For catechumens and those seeking full communion in the church, that during this Lenten season, they may experience the love of God who sent his Son to save all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer that benefactors and friends who have supported and prayed for us may find themselves drawn ever closer to the light that led them to do a good work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That God, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son to us, that we might have eternal life, may raise up the dead to sit with him in Christ in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice of thanksgiving may be acceptable to God, our almighty and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord. Praying that we may both faithfully reveal them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting, you restrain our forms, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join the saints in humble praise as we acclaim. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. It's a mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, the Holy Father Benedict, Saint Scholastica, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, George our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, all the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are present to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and bless him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Father, who so greatly loves us, we pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, <coughs> as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our peace. We pray, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. <clears throat> o God, to enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity <coughs> through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wish you all a peaceful Sunday Letare and a good week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Lord, help us walk in your servant Oh,